Hi! Good afternoon, everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I am going to be unboxing the April 2020 Paradise Fibers Fiber of the Month Club box. Uh, I've been unboxing these for, gosh, we're approaching two years now. My first one was July, not last July, but the year before. And they really are a fun fiber filled care package that you can get as a monthly subscription. Now, full disclosure, I am an affiliate marketer with Paradise Fibers, which means that if you use my link, which I have in the video description, I dropped it in the chat. Uh, if you use my link, then I do earn a commission based on that. However, you have no obligation to use my link um, and things like that. But they do send me this box for free every month for me to share with all of you. So I uh, wanted to put that out there. But I have to say that the effort and care that's put into each box makes it really feel like a care package. And I love seeing the theme. I have no idea what the theme is this month. I am really, really, really excited. Um, especially because it's fun to get a little present to show up. Oh gosh, I'm so glad so many people can join in the middle of the day. Well, I mean, I guess most people are at home right now, but uh, I've realized that I keep trying and wanting to do streams in the evenings and like my, our whole routines are so different. So I'm going to be trying to do some more morning time streams because that's the time I have for dedicated filming time and uh, some like maybe around this like rest time with the boys, which means we might get interrupted. But yeah, I just like, I, I've been so exhausted that I go to sleep about when the kids go to sleep. And so this has been, this has been waiting for me to open it up for, gosh, a couple days now. It showed up recently, so I haven't hold, held on that long, but yay! Oh, I would love to visit Spokane someday um, and go visit the shop in person because, uh, well, I'm, I'm hoping they would give me like a tour of like where they put the packages together and stuff. That would be so amazing. <laughs> uh, I would really enjoy that. Um, okay, let me see. Um, yeah, they, they have a lot of wonderful, wonderful fibers. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad that you could tune in today. Uh, I'm not sitting by my front door today. I'm actually at the dining room table because I decided, uh, let's, let's take care of my back. <laughs> I'm fine, but I've been feeling like old lately. It's a lot, like, this is all just a lot, but I hope that you guys are doing well. Let me start off with a big, big old hug. Um, I'm waiting like maybe two more minutes before I start unboxing. Uh, but let's see if, um. I don't smell anything. Although, ooh, there's something shaky in there though. Uh, I don't smell anything. I will say that, uh, so I was like, oh, but maybe I can't smell really well right now, which don't get worried. I've been doing some uh, dye pot stuff outside. And so there's been a lot of like, my, my nostrils are still filled with another scent from something else I was playing around with this morning. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, so I'm not noticing something just from the box. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm excited and we're, we're doing okay. I think I've, I've decided that it's okay to like, let some things go and like push back a few things I wanted to do here. And also just with the kids, it's like, okay, let's, maybe we're not going to do the like, full like weekly suggested school stuff but I mean I I enjoy kindergarten type work and so I enjoy doing that with Lucas I struggle more with like well, I enjoy preschool type stuff a little less but I I don't know I like playing teacher so part of it's fun it's just the time it's like at first it's like oh there's gonna be so much time and it's like where'd all the time go there's no time <laughs> uh Hello, hello, everyone. Oh, man. And go back to rest, sweetie. I hear someone knocking around. Oh, you're on cheap. All right. 
Let's start the unboxing. I couldn't find my box cutters, so we've got some scissors, but don't worry, I will pick this back up before I actually open her up. Gotta make sure that we got all that tape. Okay. Oh gosh, I can't, you know, like, I, I mean, I'd, I'd probably enjoy doing calculus again. I'm a bit of like a math science person, but yeah, high school stuff would be really hard. Oh, uh, you have a sixth grader and fifth grader. Yeah, like the kindergarten stuff, I'm like, it's a level that like I can handle. I love being like, okay, draw, like, you know, giving small prompts and he likes uh, making grocery lists or like whatever we, although, I mean, he did say, I think we needed like 12 things of ice cream on the grocery list. <laughs> so it's not a real grocery list, but all right, let's see what's in here. Da, da, da. Uh, newsletter and I can't tell. Ooh. Ooh. Looks like lilacs. My lilacs aren't blooming yet. Okay, so let's see. Now, I don't know because I haven't seen any spoilers, so I don't know if some of their plans were affected by supply chains and things like that. Um, so let's see. Um, Paradise Fibers. The theme is Let Them Make Yarn. There's a little, is it a deer? I don't know. Oh, it's like a um, tribulation. Tribulation first makes you realize who you are. Marie Antoinette. Um, so it looks like they're going to do a spin along. It's French Revolution themed. And so I'm, I'm excited. Ooh, ooh. Okay, and there's some tips of spinning. Okay, um, let me pull this open. Um, something just occurred to me. Oh, right, I wanted to give the details. So the Paradise Fibers box, it's $34.99 a month, um, which includes shipping within the continental US. There are some other shipping options for um, different some other countries further away and they are a little more expensive to account for the increase in shipping charges uh, so you and you can always reach out to paradise fibers if your country isn't listed to see if they're able to ship to you and it's after the 10th of the month but if you want this box you can reach out when you sign up now you would automatically get the may one first but you can reach out and see if they have any more of the april boxes left and each box comes with, I think, six to eight ounces of fiber and lots of other stuff. So let's see what we've got here. But as I said, you know, I know shipping supplies are, are limited. So let's see what we've got. We've got a pastel pink bag. And oh, this one's heavier, a pastel blue bag. We've got Ooh, some polyester embroidery thread right here. And then we've got a little bit of some gold sparkle. Oh, this is cute. Okay, so in here we've got um, in this little pillow box. Okay, so remember like French Revolution? Some queen and tea. Um, you know what I don't see? And I suspect that, um, uh, yes, they say, we are sorry to for for inform you that Eunice, our sheep logo, will not be making a decorative appearance as, this, as a sticker in this month's box as she's practicing social distancing. That's very, um, it's very understandable Paradise Fibers uh, and no judgment. And I think that was a very cute way to put it. Okay, so also in here, whoa, oh no. I want that bead, hold on. Oh no, where'd you go? I'm never gonna find you again, am I? No, I said I saw where it went. Oh well, I lost one. But we've got these pearlescent beads. There is a threader, like a flower threader, and it looks like we've got this cute little flower, uh, like progress keeper stitch marker that is super, it's really cute. Um, 
Okay, but yes, there are, the beads are all different sizes and they are actually very like broken violet. They have, um, they're sort of multicolored pink and blue and are really, really cute. There, there you can kind of see. <laughs> More likely the vacuum will find it someday. Okay, so that is really, really cute. And so let's see. Um, okay, so let's, let's do the pink one first. Okay, so in the pink satin bag, whoo, we have two ounces of Angora wool top. And can you see the, the static? <laughs> really coming out? I don't know if you guys can see, but it's like, it looks like a Starburst. This is so soft. Yes, my vacuum is bagless. Um, this is so, so unbelievably soft. So this is Angora wool. Um, beautiful. And you guys know, so if you're watching me just for the Paradise Fiber unboxings, you might not know what I do. I like to dye yarn and roving. And so having some bare wools of different types are really, really fun. Okay, so in here, um, we have four ounces of Romulet wool. Um, and so um, the, if I'm pronouncing that right, um, the Romulet is a breed of sheep that was first developed in the late 17th century like, Century in, um, oh, Rambulet, France, Rambulet probably, if it's French, um, by select breeding between a few hundred of the best Merino sheep from Spain. Um, it was brought to the U.S. in 1840. It's now in the Western Mountain Range, hailed as luxurious French Merino. Um, this defined breed boasts long staple length, a micron count of 20, um, I can say that this is, is very, very soft. This very um, fine wool, it's a fine wool to blend with other luxury fibers to add elasticity without compromising softness. Um, and so, and for French Angora, this is telling us it's one of the oldest types of domestic rabbit, bred for the long wispy fibers known as Angora wool, gathered by shearing, combing, or plucking. There are 11 breeds of Angora rabbit, each prize for its wool, um, it was brought to France in 1723, and there's some other things um, in here. And then also in our newsletter this month, it has some tips for core spinning, um, which is a great way to spin short stapled fibers. Ooh, hmm, like my white fluffy dog. <laughs> um, to core spin, simply attach any yarn to your bobbin, attach a fiber to the yarn and spin onto it. The yarn you choose as your core will determine the characteristics of your finished project. Interesting. Huh. The core can break from over, over, ooh, that's interesting. And then there's some um, tips for incorporating some beads into it. So, what, and then this thread, um, this plying thread is at 550 yards. Which is cool. I uh, tried to ply some yarn with thread once and then realized like I quickly ran out of thread. I was like, oh, I guess I didn't have very much yardage. Um, so I guess we could try using this for some core spinning. That's cool. I guess I didn't really, like I've heard of core spinning. I didn't really know what it was. And so, I mean, I think I would be able to spin Indy's fur like if I had something to spin onto. So that's kind of cool kind of really cool huh um oh yeah so nice I found the tea bag this is really really fun um I'm yeah I haven't looked up to see like if you know I have no idea if Paradise Fibers had to like shift gears on this one or not I think that this is really really cute and fun um, I do, I miss you, niece, and I wonder if there is like a online design of the fun sheep because that would uh, bring a smile to my face. Uh, I try to avoid spoilers so that way I can see, but oh my gosh, I don't know if I've held just like raw Angora wool before. 
This is, whew, it really does actually feel like petting a rabbit. Like, you know, if you, if you touch them and you're like, oh my gosh, they are so soft. Like you feel that, like <laughs> it just feels, it feels like just like that. Like I'm like from when I've touched like sheep, like touching wool, does it feel like touching a, sh a sheep? Because like, it's not the way it hangs, but it does, the Angora does remind me of like petting like a bunny. <laughs> So that's fun. Um, you'd love to learn to spin, but if I start a new hobby, you're, you think your husband would protest? Well, the nice thing about learning to spin is that it is a fairly inexpensive hobby to take up. Uh, all you need is a drop spindle, which you can make yourself, or they are usually, like, you can find them for as low as, like, $20, maybe even less. Um, and with the drop, that's how I started learning. Now, I don't know if I could still use a drop spindle, but... I made myself go through a lot of spinning with the drop spindle until I decided that it was worth investing in a wheel. And by investing, I mean I asked for it for my birthday and then got it for my 29th birthday. So, um, but I might have also told my husband that if I did not get it for my birthday, then I would be buying it for myself. So, uh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, listen, there's a really, really easy present you can get me. And so he and his parents got it for me. Or I could get it for myself. Um, you work from home and you just got a drop spindle from a local store. Um, yeah, it's, I find spinning to be really soothing. And it's really easy to do while, say, like watching a movie or hanging out and talking. Um, I'm sure that there are more, like, complicated things you can do. I think that, like, I don't get perfect lace weight singles. I tend to, like, I think the thinnest tend to be maybe around fingering. Maybe I get a light fingering single every once in a while. And so the yarns I end up with are tend to be a bit thicker, and that's okay. Um, so. So, all right, you, you have a question about plucking the rabbits? Let me, let me show you. Hey, Indy. Indy, up. Okay, so I'm gonna show this because Indy is, um, here, why don't you come all the way up? Indy is shedding. Oh dear, okay, fine, you're all the way up. So by plucking, they just mean, I know, he's like, what'd you do? You, you want it? So by plucking, it is literally, you know, sort of uh, just grooving. And as, as animals shed, I know, you're like, what are you doing to me, mommy? As animals shed, I know you don't love that. <laughs> so maybe not the best example, but um, like this is fiber that has fallen out, like or mostly fallen out of the follicles that you can just sort of gently, uh, gently pluck. And so by brushing or plucking, um, he's like, mommy, why are you, are you doing that to me? Um, you were going to get a cookie in a minute. Here, why don't you come all the way up? Ready, set, up. Thank you. Show the, show the people hello. He's like, Mom, I think that there's food from the boys' lunch under the table. Why can't I have that? Indy, do you want a cookie? Here. Hey, Indy, do you want a treat? <laughs> okay, Indy, come. Sit. Oh, let's do it over here so you guys can see. Indy, come. Sit. Wait. Wait. Of course, you guys won't entirely be able to see this, but I need steady. Okay. <laughs> so he's well rewarded for that demonstration. But for all, like, when I'm holding him up in the air, then when I pluck, he's like, Mommy. But in general, like, he barely notices. And so, like, I can be petting him and then pull the, like, pluck the, the, the fur that is about to fall off. Um, so, yeah. Um, yes. So, rabbits can, um, so I think it, it depends on, like, many different people what they do. I think that in general, um, brushing and plucking is preferred to shaving because you get, like, if you shave, you're cutting the fibers. Um, but yeah, so it's just, I think like, 
I don't know. I mean, I know some people who have Angora rabbits as pets and it's, you know, it's sort of like as you interact with them, like it's just present. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Beth. <laughs> um, did I train Indy? Yes. He is a bit of a jerk. Um, he like, but he can do some tricks. Hey, Indy, come. Speaking of my little fiber source, hey, Indy. Come here, sit. Well, okay, come over here. Indy, sit. Indy, pretty. Good boy. Indy, stand. Good boy. Indy, I know, I would have you roll over, but I don't know if people can see it. So, you wanna try? Indy, lay down. Oh, well that's a picture of your belly, but can you go all the way over? Indy, lay down. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's off camera. Um, so he can, he's, his breed, American Eskimo, is they love to do tricks. They're sort of like circus dogs, but he's also, his jerkness is that he is very, very protective of me and our home. And <laughs> he's just some more indie fluff. Um, you could see, although I just dropped it here. Can I have a little more? He's like, mom, his staple length is really, really short. So it's got some nice crimp to it, but... I think core spinning would need to happen because otherwise I'd struggle spinning it. But yeah, so he barks a lot, like a lot. And he doesn't accept new people coming into our home. So he's a good guard dog. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. I am the strict parent. Um, so he never jumps on me or like, you know, he, he might like come in my lap and stuff, but he doesn't like if I come in the door, he knows I don't tolerate him jumping up on me. So that's not how he greets me. Whereas like my poor mother-in-law, uh, because when he was a puppy, she would sit on the floor with him. He now demands pets constantly. Whereas like he knows like, oh, mama's working. Okay, I'm gonna hang out here and he'll come like check on me every once in a while. Um, he's a very, very sweet boy. But anyway. Someday I'm going to spin them. And so maybe core spinning um, is the way to do it. But yes, we are having a die along this month. I just released the photo like an hour or so ago. Um, so yeah, on uh, Sunday morning is going to be the live stream. So I've realized that like evenings are just, it's worth having a little bit of, I've got indie fur in my mouth, I think. It's worth having a tiny bit of extra chaos around um even if the kids are outside or upstairs it's worth that extra bit of chaos than having um yeah than me being a little like just exhausted <laughs> for it um thank you he is a super super sweet puppy um and so i have to say like this is super cute um i really enjoyed the theme and the like the like the the queen tea like that's just that's so cute um and yeah i mean it's it's super 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 sweet and i love um speaking of hey hey indy come all the way indy come i can tell you want to bark you can tell why don't you hang out here with me okay you want my back? You want up? No, he's staring at me like, if I say, Indy, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Indy, what do you want? Are you going to do it? No? Yeah. Okay, just pay attention. He might walk over to the pantry. Uh, or maybe not. Fine. Because um, <laughs> sometimes he'll just go there, sit, and stare at it. Because he knows that's where um, his edibles are uh but yeah this is a really really fun box and i don't know if either of these two fibers have come in like a natural form in any of the boxes before and so i think like the themes and everything are so much fun and makes these unboxings like extra fun because you're like oh and like i laugh and there's a lot of like puns and stuff often but the core of the box of so the fiber that's in there is I would say that there's a great mix of some like wild, vibrant colored blends and then some natural fibers that 
are from specific breeds or sometimes are things that are so unique, like past boxes that have rose fiber and pineapple fiber and things that I never would have thought of but are now just like really, really fun. And so they even include like dyeing projects in them sometimes. I think I have one saved I want to do that's up. Um, up, up by up, I have a box of like projects that I want to do um, that I just sort of keep things in because I'm like oh I want this yarn and this like dye and so I sort of keep it all together um, but this is very very sweet and so okay so they're doing um, Paris Fibers is doing a spin along right now um, don't let prox proximity and distancy get get you down join our quarantine spin along happening on all social media platforms spin together as we navigate into the unknown all levels of experience are welcome feel free to use any fiber and spinning tool you wish the spin along has already begun and ends april 30th join any time the goal of the spin along is to spin the most yardage we will award the top three spinners a paradise fibers gift card um yeah, and so you can submit yardage submissions to them. And so that's really, really cute. Um, and you can submit yardage um, submissions through May 2nd. And so they also said, now more than ever, we should offer each other a smile and support while we navigate through these tumultuous times. We look forward to seeing you participate in our quarantine spin along. We wish you and your families happiness, health, peace, and reminder. We are crafters, we are kind, creative, strong, and resourceful individuals. We will prevail and craft on together. Warmly, the Paradise Fibers family. And yeah, I think that, gosh, I mean, I want to like go to like shows and festivals and things again. And uh, we were just starting to like think and try to plan about like how that would work and like, oh, can I get to like one of the, the Vogue knittings or, well, you know, like the, there's like a fiber fest, like a sheep shearing festival nearby that we were going to go to, but obviously it's been postponed. Um, but I would definitely, I've never been to the Pacific Northwest before. The one time, Indy, Indy, hey, Indy, come. straight to his crate um the one time I think I've been there I was like at an airport on my way to Alaska uh, I feel like we stopped I mean like Seattle or something but I don't think that really counts because that's just like a, a like a layover um and back when I was only 10 uh so I'd love to get up there and so a like yeah I'd love to Go to something that might be nearby so that way I can visit the store in person. That's something that I hope uh, it's on my like yarn travel list. <laughs> uh, but I, I've talked about this before, but when I lived outside of Chicago, it was really easy for me to go to Vogue Knitting Live because I could just commute in on the train. I could get on the L and go in and be like a day commuter. But being in Boston, there um, a lot of the big festivals aren't unfortunately aren't just in Boston and so if there were some big ones like in Boston Boston it would be really easy for me to get to because again I can just hop on the train and go um or even catch a ride in with my husband or something like that because he works in the city um but yeah a lot of the the big things tend to be like more in New York um, or a little further out. And so I do have uh, a friend who would probably go and like share a hotel room with me um, for some of these things. So I'm hoping, well, who knows? Who knows what what is going to be happening, but maybe like that, that is definitely a goal. I will now, I guess, say like, a, instead of like a goal for like the next 12 months, maybe I'll say the goal for the next two years. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like, I mean, it's not to say that there aren't like smaller, like fiber things that happen like in Boston, there's definitely things that happen in Massachusetts and stuff, but I, I don't like driving far distances. So if it's something that's a little too far away, I can't necessarily convince like my family to go <laughs> with me. Uh, so yeah, the, 
Yeah, I don't I don't love driving, which is sad because I used to. But anyway, another fun fact about me. Uh, I don't really, I mean, I do drive, but like my, I try to stay just like close. Um, it has to do with like the fatigue stuff, but um, yeah, so um, masks, um, yeah, wearing masks will probably be the normal for a while. I mean, I don't think any of us can predict what's going to be happening 12 months from now. I think that like it's hard to predict. I mean, I think 12 months from now, there could be so many different ways. It's hard enough to think about what's going to be happening a couple weeks from now. Um, so all I know is that um, I wish like all of you like the best, like I wish health and love and support. This is, this is a really rough thing. And you know, I'm, Gosh, like, I, I mean, I know so many people who have been let go or furloughed and then, like, you know, the, the child care and, like, just, it's hard. Like, I know I'm personally having to put a lot of projects on hold that I was hoping to do this year. Um, and, yeah, like, I've... So I've been, I've started working on sewing some masks for uh, friends and family. I don't think I was expecting like the New York thing, like the mask order to happen, but um, I'm making some to give to some people who like, that I know who don't have any. Um, so that way, like for the limited like grocery trips and things that need to happen. But, you know, I guess I, this is all just, if you're able to stay home, please stay home. Um, and so that's, I mean, I think the best thing that we can do to keep all the people who have to still go out to work and stuff to try to keep them safe. Um, and so I think that that's like the best thing we can try to do. Uh, but yeah, I've been out in public once. <laughs> I, we've gone hiking, but um, we're able to like maintain social distancing there, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there is a, oh, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, I'm trying to, to the best of my ability, I'm still trying to be normal. Like, it's weird because I work from home. This is my workplace, right? But everything is disrupted because like I can't so for example I don't like to dye with acid dye powders for example when the kids are running around because I like to be able to have be able to clean everything before they come back into the space and so if I have like two and a half hours to film like then it's harder than when I have like eight hours to film uh, and so I can set things up and break it down and so it's um, just like things are a lot more complicated so I'm just going to be shifting some of the projects I had in mind and planning videos that I can't wait to do once like yeah once things evolve but yeah no it's just like I, and normally it's what's weird is that so if there's a snow day I would have just put the kids in front of the TV and then done editing, you know, and that's sort of what I would do. But, like, I feel almost like the kids are watching less TV than they do on a normal school day. Because usually they get home from school and I let them watch TV so that way I can cook dinner or whatever. Because, like, that witching hour between, like, 4 and 5.30 is just a lot. But now, because usually by in the afternoon, then my... Keith stop, like comes down because he'll work in the evenings but then so we have like this time together as a family which is kind of which is really nice which is going to say we're not playing video games and stuff together but like I have so much less time to edit <laughs> than I normally do and so I'm still like I, I'm co feeling confident that I'm going to be able to maintain two videos a week through whenever like right as of right now like I'm feeling very confident in that but you know the special series like 
you know, a summer mini skin mini series are on hold for now. Like I, you know, I've got the yarn, but I don't know if I have the time. Um, ooh, that's a good question. How many hours, um, how many hours per week do I spend to maintain my Chemnitz business? You know, it's really hard to quantify because like what's, what's hard is that, so norm, on a normal week, in the old normal, I would have um, four full school days from, I would say, eight to three um, dedicated to filming. Um, and so that would be like time with the house to myself. And then maybe every other Monday, a couple Mondays a month, I'd also have that chunk of time. Um, some days would be a little later because the kids had some activities after school. And so like Wednesdays would have been my late day. Um, and I could go until about 4.30. Um, but yeah, so that used to be sort of the way things were. And I would typically break it up where, uh, you know, Wednesdays would usually be a heavy filming day. And then I might do lighter filming on a couple of the other days. Um, and I try to leave one day that would be more like editing. But I can put in unlimited amount of time like replying to comments and answering questions and so it's hard when it's something that's such an extension of myself sometimes it's hard to stop working and to like set it aside and not <laughs> be Chemnitz because I mean I Chemnitz is me so it's hard to separate that sometimes but I try to be a little more focused now on not checking YouTube comments like every time I sit down at the computer or just maybe first thing in the morning going and trying to reply to as many as I can. Now if I just upload a video then I might check so like I you know I, I but it um I aim to be a little more focused. Um I want to still do this summer mini skein mini series. I just yeah I, I'm not sure like normally I think what, because it's end of April, May, June, July, yeah, three months. Normally this is when I would be announcing it and the original plan would have been for me to announce pre-orders about now. And yeah, it's, I can't. <laughs> uh, because I just, I don't think I have the time to, usually the videos for a series like that involve a lot more time because I'm dying a lot more yarn and I tried to go like kind of big with some of these projects and yeah the the that both the editing and the filming time is so reduced that um yeah I mean I, I ordered the yarn but I I yeah so I don't know um well we'll see what the time brings like the my husband's a professor and so the semester is almost over and so who knows what flexibility and things that'll bring to what we're able to do but he um like I obviously have more like flexibility around when I do things because uh I occasionally have meetings but much less frequently than uh than like a, a college professor <laughs> so it's just sort of this like balance for us to both work and then help the kids is just it's it's a lot but uh yeah I mean I think for now uh gosh I miss uh, I miss live streaming I wanted to do another like mystery dip diathon oh so bad like I was planning to do one in March. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, the, the issue is just the time to stream or the time to film. So, I mean, maybe I could do like a mystery thing and then like film and edit it instead of doing like a live stream. Even if I like just crudely edit something together it's not a bad idea because it's something that like I could do with people around. But part of the fun of that is being able to engage with people live. And so it's just, you know, it's hard because like, so I live on a, 
like we now have a basement, so I have a slab. And then um, our bedrooms are on the second floor. And then the third floor is like a finished attic kind of space. And that's where like my husband's office is. So when he's working, like I have the kids down here and like we play or whatever, and it's fine, but I can't go work up on the third floor. So when I'm working, then I basically like have to remove everyone from access to the whole first floor. And so it's like less fair to them. And so it's, it's hard and a challenge. And my family is very supportive, but the kids don't really understand the like, mommy needs to film a one minute clip. Please be quiet. <laughs> they don't quite understand that. <laughs> mm. But they, they enjoy like, enjoy stuff. And so uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. And I'll I'm trying to get, um, try to get more than like a week ahead with Dive Out Weekly, uh, because usually like the special series coming out because I would be like a couple months ahead with my standard videos and then like, okay, I've got time. I'm not, not that I'm scrambling, but I don't, I'm not like rushing to finish like next Tuesday's video. Um, and so then I have that extra time that I can put into the series. Um, and I also try to like spread things out so that way it's not like a, like too much extra work. But yeah, so long winded way as to how many hours a week, it's, it's hard to know. Like editing a video can take, oh gosh. I mean, it, it depends. I pre-edit a lot of stuff. So I sort of edit as I film. Um, and I leave, and hopefully I always remove them, but I leave notes to myself like, okay, this is a voiceover, or I make those decisions on how the video is going to go sort of uh, as I'm filming, which helps on the editing end because I'm not, usually there's not multiple takes of something that I'm trying to decide between. And so I know pretty much like I try to be as linear as I can with the filming. Uh, so... Yeah, that, that definitely can help, but uh, I'm trying to see uh, comments. Um, oh. oh gosh, yeah, oh Melanie, yeah, I, I have anxiety and it has been, I, I will admit I have been up and down a lot through all of this and um this week I've been okay and maybe it's because only one kid has like since it's Passover Ryder doesn't have school right now so I've only been focusing just on Lucas and not also Ryder's like zoom preschool and realizing like I need to give myself permission to you know what it might be a Thursday but Lucas isn't gonna really do like I'm not gonna do school today um and I'm not going to stress about trying to force Keith to do it either. Um, and so instead, like, Keith's helped Lucas to play checkers. And so, like, that's educational. Like, that's great, you know, for, for a young kid. Uh, so I'm trying to take deep breaths and let things go. Um, so, yeah, but... <sighs> Yeah, I started to say that, so one thing I've got, and I, I don't know if logistically it would work, but like I've um, cut a lot more masks. And not that I can do like a sewing tutorial or something, but I don't know, I might try to live stream while I'm like doing a bunch of sewing and like sewing masks just to hang out. I don't know if that's something people would be interested in. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, the, I just, you know, I, I crash so much in a lot of evenings. I wish like, and then with the lack of natural light, it makes it harder to, to film like in the evenings that it is during the daytime. But, oh, what time is it? I've got, I've got something cooking outside. Two o'clock. Um, I think I, I think I'm pretty good, but it, the timer might go off in a little bit. Uh. Yeah, so, yeah, I've I've got a lot. Uh, thankfully, there's a lot of content I have for the things that I have 
in my kitchen or in my house. Um, so I'm going to be able to come up with a lot of fun, silly and cute yarn dyeing videos and, you know, having um, gifts of their fiber from Paradise Fibers. Uh, from their Fiber of the Month Club box is also super welcome and gives, like, you know, each of those could easily be a video. <laughs> and so that is kind of nice that um, I'm not short on inspiration. It's more of just like, okay, this video that you really wanted to film that has like all these different steps and all these like comparisons and like variables. Maybe I can't do that right now. Maybe I need to save that for after. Um, and so like the, the dye pop PS where I compared a bunch of 75, 25 stock yarn, I'd love to do that with other types, like maybe like a DK superwash merino comparison or something, but yeah, I just don't have the time for like the research to do something like that much of a deep dive right now. Um, so you'd watch a mask live stream. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, well, let me show you. I don't know if I have the URL. Uh, I'm trying to see if I have the like cut off. If I do one, then I'd share the pattern. But so this is the kind that I've been making and there's like a, there's a pocket. Um, so you could add like a filter. Uh, and this size is, I have a small head so it fits me fine. I started making the adult one slightly bigger. Uh, I think cause my, like the pattern didn't print like the correct size. So I like sort of traced it out and expanded it to make for adult ones. And for the kids, I'm using the like adult small it fits them and I got them to try them on. <laughs> and so sort of leaving it at that. And then we're, I'm using, um, what is it? Shoelaces, shoelaces for the ties. Uh, and so, yeah, this is one of the ones and they're, they're two layer. I did one of a couple pleated ones first and I actually prefer this pattern because I like you sort of tie the string once and then you can tie at the top and I like, I don't know, I found this a little easier to sort of streamline and then like do a bunch in a row. Uh, so yeah, maybe next time I'm ready to do a bunch of sewing, I'll uh, pop on. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, I miss people. And I'd love to, I don't want to say like, meet and greet because like that seems like silly but I'd love to have the opportunity to meet some of you guys someday like for real in person and yeah I mean I feel like I know some of you because like I recognize like just seeing your names pop up and like sometimes like if you make like an order in my shop and then like I'm like oh I know this person and they like comment and like it's really really fun to recognize like your like handles and stuff and I just you know I'm getting all teary it would be really nice to actually like meet and hug people um so so yeah I mean I think uh with the mask I think people have different preferences I think I prefer the I find these a bit a little more comfortable and a little better to get like a tight fit and I sewed um like a pipe cleaner uh, into here so it can fit to the to my nose and so yeah so maybe maybe I'll do something like that um your videos jammed on me holding the box uh gosh I'm not sure try refreshing or and make sure that like the little red the live button has a little red circle because maybe it's like stuck on a past frame uh I'm not sure Yeah, but anyway, uh, so those are some thoughts. I, oh man, do I have any like fun sneak peek on hand? Not really. Um, 
Yeah, the pleated ones, and I also put like some pipe cleaners in the pleated ones. I think that for whatever reason, and maybe it's because I sewed ties for the pleated ones I did. I'll show you that that seemed, and that kind of bugged me. So here's one of the pleated ones I did. And so like I made, I made the ties and so that made it take a lot longer. Um, <laughs> so that might be the reason why I didn't like this one as much as the other kind. Also because I don't think I got the like, I don't know, I, I think that, I don't think that there's anything wrong with this kind like at all. Um, but yeah, I think that I was like, in terms of just like cutting and stuff, I'm like, oh, okay. For whatever reason, I found the other one to be less stressful for me to make. <laughs> and so I don't know. <laughs> I know that's a little odd. Um, but I certainly have a lot of fabric around. So um, yeah, got um, a few other families will send. Um, you've been using twill tape for your ties. Uh, yeah, but, oh man, so that's, that's a crafty thing that I've been working on lately. Um, there's my timer. We gotta turn off the, the pot outside. I forgot, I need to get a new hot plate of some kind. I'm not sure if it's just hot plates in general, but it has been hours and it is still not boiling. Hours. And so that is just hard. Um, so I think next time I need to like bring boiling water out so I'm closer. Granted, it's cold outside, so that doesn't help anything. <laughs> um, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad. I. I wish, like, I wish I had more time to be in the Facebook group more. And so, like, I try, well, actually, sometimes Facebook eats my comments. Um, when I'm, like, on my phone, I do try, like, when I can. Uh, but, yeah, I've just honestly been at my computer so much less than normal. Um, nice. Um, oh, good. Oh, um, yeah, I'll show the... the We got real off topic today. Okay, so this is the mask that um, I like prefer wearing. Um, and so the pattern is like really, really simple. Um, and so the construction I find to be pretty easy and I, I modified it a tiny bit <laughs> in that when I sew things together, I insert the pipe cleaner then. I don't make like a separate pocket for the pipe cleaner because it just saves one seam. But making like, Four of these took not that much more time than making one. The the rate limiting step was the like pressing the seams. And so this one I've actually like worn and then it's been through the washing machine. Um, and so it has held up really well. And I pre-wash all, all the fabric in my stash. I pre-wash before I put it in my stash because on some things I can be really organized. <laughs> and so that helps um, for then doing stuff with this. But yeah, uh, so that's that's the one that I'm that I'm using, and I'll share if I do like a, a sewing stream of some kind, um, which would probably just be right here at the table. Um, maybe maybe some evening when Keith is doing like a gaming night with some of our friends. Um, then I mean, obviously, I have to let you guys know. So make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications on so you never miss a new video. Um, oh man, can y'all tell that I was excited to hang out and chat, but anyway, I'm going to sign off and go work on that video, but I would like to give a huge thank you to Paradise Fibers for their support of not just like putting together beautiful boxes, but for their support of me and this channel. I really, really appreciate it. And I know a lot of times they'll pop on and actually be in the live chat. And 
it's just awesome. And they really do feel like a friend put something beautiful, beautiful together. And I'm excited to dye these at some point because I think that's what I'm going to probably do. And I'm now debating if I should try to teach the boys to spin. I think Lucas could sit and reach the petals almost. Huh. That's what I'm thinking about. I also want to teach him to knit. There's so many things I want to do. And it seems like there's no time for anything. But I hope that, I guess, you know, I need to wish all you guys health. And um, I'm sending lots of love. Um, I know all this sucks so much. And if I can do something that might make you guys smile, then I figure that is... A job well done <laughs> and yeah so anyway thank you guys also for being support for me like just hanging out and chatting like this is like good for my own mental health and it really does help and so I really uh, appreciate that like a lot. <laughs> I know it's like this is probably something that like other like youtubers say but like I truly truly mean it that being able to just like chat and be like free like this and talk to you guys is just really really helpful <laughs> so big big social distance hugs <laughs> this is the way i'm hugging everyone now um so yeah you guys are awesome and again if you want to check out paradise fibers it's my affiliate links in the video description. I gave the disclosure at the beginning. I am an affiliate marketer with them, so I do earn commissions, but uh, I genuinely love this box. So I hope that you will go and check it out. <sighs> All right, guys. Uh, oh, the March Dialogue recap video was up, just came up a couple hours ago, and the uh, April inspiration photo is now out, so you should go check that out. Bye, everyone.